I'm going to share with you a photo painting process from beginning to end here in Painter X3 and I'm using a photograph of a wine bottle and flowers that I took at a recent wedding. I'm going to make use of Quick Clone and you'll see here in the file cloning preferences that I'm using Quick Clone as a shortcut for doing four different operations. So let's dive in and have a go. File Quick Clone. It created a duplicate image related to that source image by a clone source relationship. It then cleared the image to white and in fact if I go and turn off tracing paper you'll see that is actually what we have, a white piece of paper. We have tracing paper which I can control the opacity of the tracing paper with this slider in the clone source panel which opened up there as part of the quick clone operation. Something new in X3 is I have a button here that says show source image and I'm going to stick this up here in the top left and then have my painting image here in the middle and I'm going to create a new layer in the layers panel and by the way you'll notice down here something else that's new in Painter X3 is the ability to have reference images which automatically have the eyedropper set so you can pick a uh, color from any image. I've opened up an image of a Picasso painting to inspire me for in terms of color and form. There's a little icon here on the bottom left of the reference panel it says open reference image so you can go from that to any image uh, anywhere on your computer. So what I'm doing is using a grainy cover pencil and I'm going to work here very very quickly and loosely and control the color so um, the nice thing about this pencil is that as I press lightly it gets very faint as I press heavily it becomes more dense so I can get quite a lot of nice line control here and I'm just going to quickly sketch out the main elements of this composition. I'm not worried too much about detail. In fact, I particularly want it to be sort of loose. And um, when you're using tracing paper, it's a good idea every now and then to turn it on and off. So canvas tracing paper or command T on a Mac, control T on a PC. Um, and I'll just do that with the keyboard here. So uh, it's a nice way to just quickly check back and see what's really going on on your digital canvas. So what I'm going to do now is go to the background canvas and I'm going to pick a digital watercolor, broad water brush. Basically it's very much like a glaze. So I'm going to work a little bit in the background there with my own color. So this is again not using color from the photo. And I'm going to turn tracing paper off so we can see what's happening here. And I'm just going to visually look to the left. because I did all those lines in a layer they are uh, visible above this digital watercolor which in itself acts as a sort of layer actually um, above the background canvas and do remember when you're doing this sort of thing that when you save always save as a riff especially when you're working uh, with a lot of layers and the special layers like digital watercolor and now I'm actually going to work with clone color and one thing to note is that if you look on the left, do you see how there's a crosshair? So you can actually see how this digital watercolor is picking up color now directly from the photo. And uh, one of the things you're going to find is that sometimes that's a good thing, but sometimes it gets a bit gray. Like I can tell if I go down to the bottom of the vase, I'm going to end up just with gray because this really it has a lot of gray in it. So I'm just going to use this a bit sparingly here. Make this a, just a little bit bigger and just dab it in like this. 
I'm going to finish this off with one more layer, this time between the canvas and that first layer that I was working on. And I'm going to go and get a square chalk, make it quite a large square chalk. We'll also have a look at the paper's library and pick a nice paper to work with. I like this paper. This is a new paper in Painter X3's library called Madness. And we're going to work with a little bit of color from the color wheel. We gotta go and grab a color, a bit of that red from the Picasso, a bit of that background brown there for up here. So we can really have some fun with this. And then I'll also turn on clone color for a moment and actually now you see the crosshair on the left so that's always useful and i'm now picking up color from the original photo so i can do this complete mix here of going back and forth between my own color color from the photo color from the reference image and this really starts to illustrate the incredible power of the new cloning workflow in painter x3 do a little signature in the bottom left and let's just see how this all looks et voila over to you have a go and have some fun